Hello students, let's learn English together. Today we are going to learn about the short story called Tan Jung Ru by Min Fong Ho. This story is about Mr. Lee who had recently lost his mother, Ah Ma. In this story, he regretted not listening to his mother's stories about Tan Jung Ru a place where he grew up as a kid. When his mother was gone, Mr. Lee was left with many unanswered questions in his life. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe the plot and key events that had taken place in the short story, explain the physical and social settings of the short story, describe the characters and their characteristics in the short story, and lastly, you should be able to list down the themes and moral values of the short story. Follow my instructions and you will be able to appreciate the short story Tan Jung Ru by Min Fong Ho in no time. So, what are we waiting for? Let's begin! Before we begin our lesson today, Let's study the plot summary for the short story. In this section, I'm going to use a dramatic structure to describe the events that had taken place in this short story. Exposition The day after his mother's burial, Mr. Lee sat alone in his office. He was feeling sad and anxious. Suddenly, he remembered that he had not counted the ships in the harbour that day. It was a routine in the past. Rising action As he looked at the harbour using a pair of binoculars, he recalled the days he presented the binoculars to Ama, his beloved mother. He was eager to show the binoculars to Ama the day he had bought them. He bought the binoculars so that his mother could see better. Ama agreed to use the binoculars if she could have a better view of Tanjung Ru from Mr. Lee's office. Tanjung Ru was a place where Mr. Lee used to grow up as a kid. The next morning, Ama took a long time to perform her ritual in the altar room. Mr. Lee knew he was running late, but he waited patiently. Suddenly, he heard Ying, his daughter, arguing with her grandmother over some jaw sticks. Mr. Lee scolded his daughter for being rude to her grandmother. At his office, Ama couldn't see the ships in the harbour. Instead, she saw how Tanjung Ru used to look like in the past. Ama recalled catching crabs with her son and looking at half-built fishing boats at the beach. Feeling frustrated, Mr. Lee took away the binoculars from his mother and refused to listen to her story. Climax Mr. Lee suddenly yearned to go back to his roots when he was growing up as a little boy in Tanjung Ru. However, he couldn't recall most of his childhood memories. He felt guilty for never talking to his mother about the past, especially when she was alive and well. By this time, Ama was too ill to provide him with the answers. Mr. Lee felt frustrated and took it out on Ying. Both of them got into an argument. Falling action After Ama's death, Mr. Lee finally understood the importance of tradition. He realized he had to look after the altar for the sake of his mother. He rushed home and quickly went into the altar room. He placed his mother's picture next to his father's. As he was getting ready for prayers, he realized he couldn't open the drawer where Ama kept the joysticks. He didn't know where his mother kept the key. Resolution Unable to perform his prayers, Mr. Lee whispered to his mother that he finally remembered how Tanjung Ru used to look like. 
For a moment, he was overcome by emotions. However, he felt awkward talking to his mother's photograph, so he left the room quickly. Now, let's study the settings of this short story. The settings of this short story can be divided into two parts, which are physical and social settings. Physical settings. The most important setting in the story is Tanjung Ru, the place where Mr. Lee used to grow up as a child. In the past, it was full of shipyards where fishing boats were made. In the present day, however, it has been replaced with tall buildings and skyscrapers. The next setting in the story is Mr. Lee's office, which overlooks the Singapore harbour. This is the place where Ama tried to use the binoculars to see Tanjung Ru where her children grew up. Another setting where an important event had taken place in the story is the hospital room. This is where Mr. Lee had an argument with his daughter, Ying. The last setting in the story is the altar room. This is an important part of the house where Ama performed her daily prayers. Social settings The social settings of this short story can be divided into two periods. The first is modern day Singapore. In this era, success and keeping up with appearances are important. People are generally impatient and have little time for one another. They also prefer to distance themselves from tradition. For example, they adopt foreign names and prefer imported merchandise over local ones. The second setting is early 20th century Singapore. This is the era where Mr. Lee grew up as a boy in Tanjung Ru. At that time, life was hard, but the people were able to enjoy simple things in life. They also valued their family above anything else. There are several characters in the story. Let's study all of them. Mr. T. W. Lee Mr. Lee was called Awa by his mother and Edward by his wife in the story. He was a 63-year-old Singaporean businessman who was really proud of his success. He came from humble beginnings. He used to live in a little hut where he grew up in Tanjung Ru. Mr. Lee had several characteristics. Firstly, he was a filial and loving son. He bought binoculars so that Ama could see better. He also made sure that his mother's burial was done the right way. When Ama passed away, he decided to look after the family altar as instructed by his mother. Mr. Lee was also a person who preferred the simple life. For example, he thought that the rooms in his house were too big and that he had too many of them. He also disliked his wife's gathering with her friends. He didn't like the idea of eating cakes made with foreign fruits. Lastly, Mr. Lee was ashamed of his background. He preferred to be seen as a man who inherited his money instead of a person who earned it from effort and hard work. Ama. Ama was Mr. Lee's mother. Her granddaughter called her Papa, which means grandmother in Cantonese. She was the mother of nine children, grandmother of 34 grandchildren, and a great-grandmother of 17 great-grandchildren. She was described as a small and thin woman with grey hair and a bent back. Ama had several characteristics. Just like her son, she also preferred the simple life. She reared chickens in the garden. She also told her son not to buy her anything because she had everything that she needed in life. Ama was also an example of a traditional person. She took care of her family altar with much passion. She also made sure that the ancestral worship customs were to be followed properly. This resulted in an argument with her granddaughter Ying. Lastly, 
Amma was portrayed as a stubborn person. For example, she refused to go for an eye operation to remove her cataract. She also insisted on using real candles for the family altar for years. The theme in a story is the underlying message or the big idea. It is the belief that the author is trying to convey in writing. This belief or idea surpasses cultural barriers. It is usually universal in nature. When a theme is universal, it touches on the human experience, regardless of race or language. There are several themes highlighted in this short story. Let's study all of them. The first theme of this short story is traditional values versus modern ideas. In this short story, Ama symbolized traditional values. She truly upheld the traditional practices of the Chinese community. For example, she often prayed to the ancestors so that they would bless her family. On the other hand, Mr. Lian Ying represented the modern society who did not put high emphasis on tradition. The second theme of this short story is past versus present. Ama symbolized the past while Mr. Li symbolized the present. This can be seen clearly when they were looking at the harbor using the binoculars. Mr. Li saw the ships in the harbor while Ama saw how Tanjung Ru used to look like in the past. The last theme of this short story is regret. Mr. Li regretted how he treated Ama in the past. He had never paid attention to his mother's story when she was alive. When she had passed away, his questions would remain unanswered for the rest of his life. Moral values are standard accepted principles of life. It relates to the principles of right and wrong of a human character. It is also the standards of good and evil, which govern a person's behavior and choices. In literature, moral values are important lessons from writing which we can apply in life. There are several moral values highlighted in this short story. Let's study all of them. The first moral value of this short story is, although we live in the modern world, we must not forget our traditional values. In this modern world, our traditional values and practices play an important role so that we will never forget our roots and identity. This is what Ama tried to instill in her children and grandchildren. The second moral value of the short story is, we must learn to appreciate our loved ones while we can. Spending time with your family and loved ones is the most important thing in life. Life as we know it is full of surprises and death is just a part of it. We will never know when our loved ones will leave us. For this reason, we have to show our love and appreciation while they are still alive. The last moral value of this short story is, while money can buy most things, it cannot buy everything. In this modern world, we get too caught up in material pursuits that we forget to enjoy the simple things in life. Unlike her son, Ama seemed satisfied with everything that she had. However, she longed to go back to Tanjung Ru when life was simple and meaningful. One can have lots of money to spend, but that does not guarantee peace of mind. This shows that there are certain things in life that money can't buy. I hope you have learned new things from this video and I hope to see you again soon. Till next time, goodbye!